We are five minutes away from Beverly Hills Hotel, 10 minutes away from Rodeo Drive. Your zip code is 90210. It doesn't get much better than that. I think it does get better than that. If Sharon Tate wasn't murdered in this property, it would have been a little bit better than this. And also, if it was actually in Beverly Hills and not just had the zip code, you would have saved, what, 5.5% on mansion tax? You've only been told half of the truth, the good half. You're about to find out the bad and the ugly. My name is Arvin Haddad. I'm the how to buy a mansion guy. I've critiqued over a thousand mansions. It's just what I do. Let's get the show started. I'm really excited for today's tour. This property is incredible. We're on the motor court right now, and this property is extremely private. Okay, I love the fact that it has a private driveway. The motor court is very impressive. You definitely have that approach, the frontage, excellent. But it's secure. These massive gates open up to a long driveway. You can easily park 15 to 20 cars up here. And down below us, we have a subterranean garage that can easily hold 15 additional cars. Now it gets better because driveway also continues to the back of the property where we have additional two car garage. And there's a staircase there that takes you directly to the primary bedroom suite. And we're gonna see that side of the home later on the tour. Now coming back here, this has to be one of the most impressive motor cars we've ever toured in the city. Look at these views. I mean, it is insane. Then we have this. Okay, the views are pretty good. You get downtown LA view, you get Century City view, and you get 180 degree open angle, you know, pretty much unobstructed for the most part views from almost every single room in this house, which is really, really cool. I can't stop. Yeah, the way this house sits up on the hill like this, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it basically sits on a massive retaining wall. This is very important. If you pay attention, the property is super long, right? It doesn't have much depth. It has a lot of length. And your backyard is really in your side yard, which is a negative. It's not the best lot ever. You have a lot of acreage that is flat. Now, a lot of it is engineered, but overall, for sitting up in the mountain and still having this much flat, even though it's engineered, it's pretty good. Come on, follow me this way. Let's check out some of the details here. Beautiful entry. Again, it's all stucco and precast stone. We have this dome ceiling detail here because as soon as you walk in, you go into this two-story foyer. Just like the motor court, this space is also very impressive. Okay, you do have a foyer wow factor, right? It's a pretty impressive foyer. It has a dome, but you don't get to see the view because you're entering from the side of the house, right? The approach, the front driveway, everything is great, but when you enter, you enter sideways to the home and you have to take a few steps to get to see the view. It would have been much better if you would have seen the view right away, but the foyer is, a, you know, it has that elegance about it, really high ceiling, dome ceiling. You know, I give the wow factor a five or a six. I love this curved staircase going up to the second floor. Right above us, we have this massive dome ceiling with a chandelier right in the center. Now follow me this way. We have the first opening here, taking us to the game room. Plush carpet on the floors, pool table in the center, chandelier, TV, dark cabinetry, built-ins, and we have a poker table here. This is a really nice room, and there's just a lot of weight to it. So this kind of cherry wood cloud offices, classic traditional look, and I love the fact that they've utilized the space as a kind of a adult's game room, poker room, you know, and, and the pool table and that green fabric on the pool table and the poker table really make a perfect color match with the, you know, cherry wood paneling everywhere. It's very classic look. I like it. Now let's go to the other side. By the way, this is the main hallway that takes you to the rest. Okay, this is one of the biggest flaws of the house. Remember, we walk in from sideways to the house and the house is a long house. So you're going to have this massive hallway. I like the width of the hallway, definitely luxury but that's gonna cause a lot of problems, as you will see later in the video. That's at home. This door right here opens up to the lower level, which we're gonna check out later. And follow me this way so we can check out the first seating area. Hardwood floors, beautiful stone fireplace that complements the seating area, piano around the corner, multiple French doors opening up to the courtyard, and we have a massive picture window here facing the views. Ceiling height is great, same Venetian plasters also. 
okay, this room is never going to get used. This is your typical formal living space that no one ever uses it. It's cool that they've kind of put music instruments in there, so they've given it some utility while they're living there. But this space to me is, you know, very tra very traditional layouts. Back in the day, they used to always, you know, have this formal room that is just for the show. It's a kind of a reception area, not even a formal area. But I have some ideas how to really improve the space and switch things around. So remember the space, I'm gonna come back to it. Also here, and lastly, before we leave this room, we also have a jukebox here, dressing the room very nicely and just complimenting the space. Follow me this way. Now we have this long hallway. On my right hand side, wine cellar. On my left hand side, there's a beautiful bar. Then you go into the second seating area. I'm gonna say this is more like your formal living room. All right, this space is way too narrow. Again, the hallway is taking so much of the square footage. It's much more longer and doesn't have enough width. I'm not a big fan of this space. Again, I don't see how often you would use this space. And then considering you have two living areas next to each other, it's very redundant. Again, you have your comfortable couches, chairs, coffee table in the center, coffee ceiling above. This house has Andalusian architecture. Okay, I think he meant to say Andalusian architecture which is, this is funny, like one foreigner is correcting another foreigner. This is what happens to you allow foreigners and we're probably both wrong. But it's a mix of uh, Roman architecture and the Moorish architecture. But this property is more of a Moorish architecture and a Mediterranean architecture. The elements of the Roman architecture, I can't find anywhere in this house. So this is an American made up style. And I don't consider it to have any architectural significance. It, I do find it some so what pleasant to look at, but I wouldn't call it architecturally a masterpiece or whatever. I can see the Mediterranean details, stucco, then you see the pillars. It even has a little bit of an Islamic, I feel like, influence to it, like a little bit of a Morocco in there. A lot's happening. I would call it architecturally confused. They have a really interesting architectural history. They were like invaded by the Moors through uh, North Africa a very long time ago. So that kind of like, they have this little Islamic flair too. This house doesn't have any Islamic flair. This is like a classic ranch. Why is he showing this? There's nothing Islamic architecture about this property. Now, let's cover the specs of this property. We have nine bedrooms, 18 bathrooms, 21,000 square feet of interior space, built on a 3.6 acre lot. Okay, a lot of this is not flat, but you know, it does have a good section of flat area. It's just really narrow, but they utilize it really well. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the property. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Now, follow me this way. Second important detail about this room is the fact that we have motorized sliding glass doors seamlessly opening up to the patio. This is a great view. You get a little bit of hillside. The, you know, at downtown LA view, I'm a little bit worried about these trees getting a little longer and it's obstructed. You might want to have a little chat with the owners of these properties and do it a little schnip schnap. But uh, it's very wide angle, uh, very open. You get Century City and downtown LA. We call it the twin views. It's beautiful. It's really good. And you got you do have that jetliner drop as well. I like it. I give the views and you know eight and a half. First, we have the covered section with built-in speakers and these ceiling fans. And if you look above, you can see that they carried out the same coffered ceiling detail to this section as well. We have lounging beds here, and then patio takes to this space where we have the water feature. Look at these views. Incredible. I mean, you have the entire city in front of you from downtown Los Angeles all the way to the ocean. We are five minutes away from Beverly Hills Hotel, 10 minutes away from Rodeo Drive. And that's really impressive to me because you live on a hillside, but you're still so close to the center of Beverly Hills. Your zip code is 90210. It doesn't get much better than that. I think it does get better than that. If Sharon Tate wasn't murdered in this property, it would have been a little bit better than this. And also if it was actually in Beverly Hills and not just had the zip code, you would have saved what, five and a half percent on mansion tax? These are your views and it gets better. Down below us, we have this grass section. It's like a little meditation area. And below that is an extremely spacious one bedroom, one bath guest home with its own kitchenette. All right, follow me this way back to the main hallway and look at all the details, arches, plaster walls, these Buddhas. Now, the reason I wanted to come to this section is to tour these powder bathrooms. They are incredible. Look. They're not very dated. Look at all the details here, colors. 
textures. This hand-painted vanity here, it's done really well. I mean, look at the curved ceilings. Then you come on this side, more of the lighter tones, but pretty much the same design elements. These I don't get it. Two powder bathrooms right next to each other? What is it, one for men, one for women? It doesn't make any sense. Are you gonna put a transgender one too? All right, back to the hallway now, so we can continue our tour with the rest of the house. Now, I really like- Are you noticing how it's room to room to room to room? That's a problem with a long house. Now, we're gonna check out the formal dining room. Very spacious. I love the fact that, it, what is it, a 12 person? Um, dining room, very wide, a lot of setback. This is what a really luxurious property needs to have a formal dining room that is grand like this. But again, I just don't like the fact that there's just two living rooms next to each other on that side. Then there's the dining room and you will see the kitchen next. You have a massive table right in the center that sits 12, chandeliers above. Ceiling is also curved with mood lighting around. Now guess better, there's actually a service hallway that connects this room to the kitchen, and this kitchen is stunning. It's super small. That's a very, very small kitchen, and it's extremely dated, and it's a closed kitchen. Okay, now imagine this. Imagine these two rooms combined. You take the wall down. You're going to have the dining room and the kitchen combined, and you just have one massive kitchen with double islands. You get rid of the aquarium. You have a massive living space, and then you put the dining room in the music area, the first formal living area. I think that would have been a way more open layout. It would have taken out this room to room to room situation away. You would have had one really grand living space or formal living space that is longer, but also you have the dining room where you have downtown LA views. I know it's a little bit farther away from the kitchen, but I think the only way you can fix this is open up the kitchen to the dining room and make it a huge kitchen where it becomes a living area. So I think you have a solution to kind of fix this situation, which I like that. Looks like a kitchen that would be in a home in Italy. This property gets a lot of natural light. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of calm down the lighting in the kitchen, make it easier for our cameras. So I love that about this house. You're east facing, south facing, and west facing. You're gonna get a ton of natural light coming in. And that's one of the benefits of this property. And then coming this way, rest of your kitchen, your paneled freezer and fridge, and a little service counter here because there's a pocket door that leads us to the informal dining area. Table in the center, seating for six, coffer ceilings above, two massive picture windows, and right in the center we have the French doors opening up to the patio on this side. Now, going back to the kitchen because I wanna show a detail on this hallway. So this is the main hallway, right? Right on the other side, there's a staircase that goes up to the second floor, complemented with a water feature here. This. That's a really ugly water feature. Staircase goes up directly to the landing of the primary bedroom suite. What is this Game of Thrones inspired chandelier? Really, really bad. Now, the reason they designed it that way is because that door opens up to the back driveway and that hallway takes you to the two car garage. So the owner can come to the back of the property, park in the garage and go directly up to their primary bedroom without having to go. That's really smart. I like that. See, they've done certain stuff to fix the fact that it's a long house and for the owner not to have to go through the entire house to go to their master bedroom. I like that. All right, back to the hallway again so we can check out the family room. I think this is my favorite seating area. Okay, the finishes are just so old. I think the buyer for this property would have to redo a lot of stuff in this house. A lot of the interior, floors, the kitchen, definitely the layout. Because if you don't fix the layout problem, I don't think you're going to add any value to this property by just updating the kitchens because you still haven't solved the problem. But this is a massive, good volume. The ceiling heights are not super tall, but it does the job for creating this massive, very warm family room that opens up to the backyard, which is really your side yard. In the house, you have a massive L-shaped couch, coffee table. Mike, you follow me this way? There's also a really nice bar here with a water wall. Now we actually saw this water feature on the other side where we have the secondary staircase. It's technically double-sided, but I thought for a second that water was also running on this side. It's not, it's just, the texture. That would have been cool. That would have been really cool. Yeah. I was like, how 
Because that's a really ugly bar. The backdrop is dated and, and the counters are really dated. Again, all this has to be redone. The entire living space has to be redone. And coming back here, again, we have the fireplace right in the center. There's actually a TV here. I wanted to mention that. And fish tanks on each side. And again, space is incredible. These are motorized sliding glass doors. That's the start of your incredible backyard. But before we tour that space, I actually want to take everybody downstairs so we can check out the entertainment level. Now, this level is really exciting. We got a few cool rooms to see. It doesn't look exciting when you walk into it because you walk into a hallway and, you know, the ceiling heights significantly drop and it just looks really, really dated. See, off of the landing, small seating area. No one's ever going to sit there. Why would you want to sit in a hallway? Foosball table here. And the foosball table is in the hallway again. Here. Then double doors open up to the game room. I love these timeless arcade games. Okay, so this to me looks more like a storage area that they've converted to a game room. It's cool. I mean, they've made it fun. Uh, I would probably do the same thing. But if it doesn't have storage areas in other areas of the house, then, you know, for a house this big, you need a lot of storage. Let's continue. Now, back to the landing. Over there, we have the first opening leading you to the elevator. Next to that is a very, very interesting room. Amma, can we get a close up? Mm -hmm. What is this sign right here? Oh, there's a photograph camera. <laughs> it's a photo booth. Oh, no way. It's so cool. You said. This is like the champagne room. Down here, you have your LED lighting, take your photos, just have fun. This level is all about fun. And yeah, this is your photo booth. Let's close the door and check out the bar that's next door. I just love the textures, details here. Okay, I just don't see any reason why you would drink at this bar. I think, you know, the library or the game room upstairs was way nicer than this. Why would you come to this part of the basement with these low ceilings to hang out here to drink? Uh, maybe if you don't want to wake up the kids, you know, you're having friends over, maybe. Cold lighting above, glass shelves on the back, your bar beautifully curves, bar seating. It's just a really nice space that welcomes. Those couches are so dated, so dated. This is like 20, 30 years old. Due to the movie theater, I love that they even brought the Buddha statues here. Sorry for shaking the Buddha. And continuing our tour, service hallway for the movie theater this is where you have your snacks popcorn machines on the other side you have a half bathroom and then these custom double doors lead you into the movie theater okay very old hollywood it's cool i mean if that's the look you're going for cool um whatever i gotta say this has to be one of the coolest movie theaters we've ever seen on our channel just the way it's designed wool panels wool padding you have your stage massive tv a lot is going on on this movie theater and uh i hope you guys enjoyed touring the lower level now let's go all the way to the top floor so we can see the bedrooms Here we are on the second floor. First thing I want to talk about is the dome ceiling here with the chandelier. It is such a statement piece. And this landing alone, the curvature staircase, these stained glass windows, double doors open up. You have this incredible space, sliding glass doors open up to a beautiful balcony that is joined by a couple of the bedrooms on this level. That way you can enjoy the outdoors a little bit more. And the space is phenomenal. You have a seating area, fire. You know, it's a pretty inspiring place to work. I just don't like the color palettes, orange and beige and wood and, and you know, pinkish carpet. It's just so 1960s and uh, it's just not the nice version of 1960s. Now, follow me back to the landing. Look at the length of this hallway. If you ever see a long hallway like this, when you're looking at a property, just know that that's a flaw. It's nothing to be impressed about, okay? It shows that it's downstairs. In the upstairs, it works out because you can put the bedrooms next to each other. That's where they would go. But downstairs, you're going to have that long situation where you don't get good connectivity. You don't get that heart and soul of a house. You have to go from room to room to room to room. It's a negative. Now, follow me this way. We're not going there yet. We have this long hallway, and this door opens up to the first bedroom suite on this level. This house has so many different rooms, and I'm gonna do my best to cover them all. Laundry room, 
follow me this way. This is a staircase that takes you down to the staff quarters. So there's an easy access point. And then going through this door, we have the gym. It's a very spacious room. You have the mirror back wall, French doors open up to a front facing balcony. I wouldn't call this spacious. That way you can get natural light and fresh air to this room. A few gym equipment, TV, and then you follow me this way. We have pocket doors opening up to your spa. I like the natural stone floors and we have a lot of bedrooms to see. And that's why I'm gonna jump back to the landing so we can continue our tour with the other wing. Like I said earlier, there are a lot of bedrooms in this house, so we're gonna brush over a couple of them. This is the first one, faces the backyard. Then on the other side, we have another bedroom. This one faces the back. Why don't we check out this bedroom here? This one will be the fourth one. Just like the rest of the rooms that we toured, this one is very... Just the interior design is so wacky. It just, come on, like it's just very cheaply decorated, I would say. Um, and then it, it doesn't help the fact that a lot of things are dated. You got to pay attention. If the house is listed for $59 million, okay, the buyer for this house right now is living in a $20 million home. And that $20 million home, I promise you, looks a lot newer, sharper, nicer, with latest finishes. So when they're trying to upgrade to a bigger property, they're not going to be okay with these finishes. They're not going to be okay with these color palettes. So to in the eye of it, buyer for most buyers for this property this house is a gut job and when you consider that it has major layout issues as well it's even going to cost more and then how much square footage does it have like twenty thousand square feet that's a very expensive to remodel twenty thousand square feet of space right a lot of floors a lot of paint a lot of finishes a lot of bathrooms a lot of marble that should be factored in into the price that you would want to pay for a house like this. At the end of the video, I'll give you guys a price opinion of how much I think it's worth. So stay tuned. Now, follow me back to the hallway. Last bedroom here faces the back of the property. And at the end, we have the landing for the primary bedroom suite. Now we talked about the staircase here on the first floor. This is how you come up directly to the primary bedroom suite without having to go through the other staircases. And then we have the double doors opening up to the primary bedroom suite. Look at the ceiling design here with these exposed beams. Then right in the center, they have this crazy contraption. What's going on? We went from Andalusian design, which is supposed to be Moorish, to a Moorish Mediterranean design, but then on the interior space, it's Belenese. What is, it's so confused. The house is entirely confused. On the outside, it's something else. On the inside, it's something else. It's, it, there's no cohesiveness to it. I love the space. I think it has a lot of volume. It's a great, you know, square shape with stunning views of everywhere. And you overlook the backyard. I love the location. I love the privacy aspect of it too. But it's just like, it doesn't go with the rest of the house whatsoever. To warm up the room, they place the fireplace here, but of course, two fish tanks. Follow me here. Let's go to the bathroom. Right in the center, we have the glass enclosed walk-in shower, book match stone, rain head above. Okay, it looks like this part was recently redone. Like they had it, they're like, okay, we need to update the bathroom for the primary. All these fixtures, and I really appreciate that it's glass enclosed. That way you can enjoy the views from your walk-in shower. Look at these views. It's stunning. That's a really, really good view from your bathtub overlooking the city. No one looks into your property. We're going to talk about privacy because there's a mega mansion being built right above you, but I'll cover that when we go to the backyard. But this is really nice. I mean, the fact that positioning about, you know, where to put the bathroom, you know, why would you want to leave your bathroom after this? And now let's go through here. First water closet on this side, by the way. Now, they had a B-Day. Let's check out the walk-in closet. Island in the center, all this wardrobe space, open shelving, hangers, chandelier in the center. And this is the first section of the walk-in closet. On the other side, we have the second part. This one also comes with an island. And this is massive, great closet space and well utilized. Again, very dated, uh, you know, it looks really old, but a lot of space. Another chandelier, ton of cabinetry. You have your drawers, open shelving, pretty much everything you need. Now, ready for the second part of the primary bathroom? This is where we have the built-in tub, stone surround. It's all jetted. 
And then look at this opening here. These are fantastic. I mean, I'm not into taking bath, but this is like a jetliner view of downtown LA. I would take a bath over here all day. Like this is amazing. It's really cool. Positioning and, and your elevation above everyone else. No one can look into it. You know, you could be butt naked over here. You're totally fine. And it doesn't end here because we're gonna open up the French doors here to the wraparound balcony for the primary bedroom suite. I'm just gonna wrap around to the other side of the balcony, another seating area, fire pit, sliding glass doors open up. I mean, this is incredible. This is your bedroom and it just flows to the outside. In fact, you have a private staircase here that takes you directly to the pool. We should check that out next. Okay, this was awesome. The primary bedroom is awesome. You have incredible views from it, very spacious, good amount of closet space, outdoor spaces, great connectivity to your car to get the hell out if you want to, to the kitchen, to the backyard. I love how this section of the house plays out. Uh, I think this house has a lot of potential. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg to uh, renovate it, but I see a lot of potential here. Like we saw earlier, we have a sliding glass doors opening up to the covered patio off of the family room. There's another patio here, but more importantly, this is where we have the pool. Now this space, this part of the backyard is just insane. It's really the side yard, mind you. The backyard is, you know, on the back, but your side yard is your backyard. All right, let's take everybody, come on. So we have lounging areas here. Views are incredible. And then again, look at the landscaping here. Look how they develop the hillside to incorporate all these. You see this lazy river? I have to say, this is one of the funnest backyards I've seen. If you've got kids, you buy this house, everyone would want to come play at your house, which is what you would want, right? But it's so ironically sad that Sharon Tate, not related, it's not Andrew Tate's mom or anything, this is like 1960s star, about 50 years ago, was murdered on this property. Now, it was a different house. It wasn't this, you know, piece of land. They, they, they've completely put retainer walls. They've, you know, reinforced the place. They tore that house down. This is a new structure. But that was one of the most famous murders that had ever happened in LA that people still talk about it. And that has created a bit of a bad stigma towards this house. And it's ironic because it's the perfect family home and probably some families would have a problem with raising their kids over here where these crazy murders happen. I surely don't. I think six months and you're clean, right? It's been 50 years so since those murders have happened. If you live in New York or Boston or London, I'm sure in any apartment that is aged 200 years or older, at least five, six people have died in that apartment that you're living in. But I love this backyard. I wish I could have a backyard like this for my kids. They would love it. All right. Let's go this way. Before we continue checking out the rest of the pool, I actually want to bring everybody to this side. You have this grass section here, glass railing throughout, and these views, Pacific Ocean, Santa Monica, Wilshire Corridor, all the way to downtown Los Angeles. Between the interior square footage, lot, location, these view corridors, and all of it coming together, for the price point, it's a great value because... It's not. Okay, let's talk about value. $59 million is way too much for a property that you completely have to redo about 20,000 square foot of living space. Follow me, Colin. Let's continue our tour. Again, views are fantastic. This is the second part of your main pool. I love the mosaic tile here that they have throughout the property. It just gives it a nice reflective and a contemporary look. This is one of the biggest swimming pools. Did you realize it's like three pools really connected with a lazy river? There's that pool up front with the waterfall where the slide comes in. And then this is like the bar pool area. Super, super cool. Coming down to this space, we have another covered seating area. I love how it's all decorated. You have your cushions on the back. You can see this stone design and they also have a pop-up TV here. That way you can raise it and ceiling treatment, these open. Okay, so many cool nooks, so many interesting. I really like this house. I have to say, this is the type of properties I like to purchase for myself. Not that I can afford this one, but I like properties that 
you could modify and you could improve to add value to them. This property, though, you have to do two things. You have to completely redo the entire interior, right? And you have to fix the layout problem. You need to give it that big living area, big kitchen, open kitchen to really add value to this property. You have a potential to extend the living areas in the kitchen out too by covering the area over that terrace from upstairs so you could potentially add more square footage over there too and take that narrowness out of that formal living area out and give it make it a more of a square shape which I think it would look more proportional and nicer and it would remediate the problem with the long wide hallway that takes so much square footage away from the living areas right it makes it more proportional now the elephant in the room the neighbor upstairs big brother looking over your shoulder the good news is that they don't have a direct angle looking into your property. They have to go to the end of their backyard, look down, and they're gonna see mostly your roof, maybe a little bit of the edges of your backyard, but it's not a privacy issue. More than anything, it was probably five, six years of a lot of noise and dust and construction right next to you. I, I'm approximating maybe there's another year or two of construction left. I see that as the main downfall. Now, before I tell you guys how much I would actually pay for this property in its current condition, because I do think it would require 10 to $20 million to really bring it up up to par. Let me show you the AI forecast for Beverly Hills so we'll see where we are. I'm gonna click on California, then Los Angeles County, and then let's zoom into Beverly Hills which is right here. We have a strong sell signal. Currently, it's a buyer's market. It's going to be more of a buyer's market. By February, almost 11 months from now, the market is going to be 4% more buyer-friendly with 50% confidence level. This model takes 30 different housing indicators, supply, demand, housing information, unemployment rate, mortgage rate, and mortgage rate forecast, gives you a buy and sell signal, and we have a strong sell signal. I wouldn't pay more than $30 million for this property. Now, if you like this video, you would really like this other property that had major layout problems, which I don't even think I can fix. Check it out. I'll see you guys in the comments.